Hi, everyone, and welcome to Connecting Your Physical Space to Your Digital Strategy and Design. Uh, today, we're going to look at some of Atten's recent work and the ways we've built connections between digital and physical spaces. I'm Ken Woodworth. I'm Atten's VP of Design and a partner. And joining me today are Kelsey Boyd, Atten's digital strategist, Catherine Sutton, our senior UX UI designer, and Janice Camacho, Atten's director of project management. For over 20 years, Atten has been working with organizations making an impact all over the world. As a digital agency, we've created websites, apps, touchscreen kiosks, interactive games, and many other types of digital experiences. One of our earliest projects was an interactive map for the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation called Tour the Town. Tour the Town was an interactive and animated experience for exploring the historic area of Colonial Williamsburg in Williamsburg, Virginia. Living in Williamsburg at the time, I spent hours wandering around the historic area, taking pictures of every single building inside and out. I tried to immerse myself in the experience of being there, seeing the people, the buildings, the animals, and experiencing what visitors experience when they come to Colonial Williamsburg. With my library of photos and a visitor's guide in hand, uh, I created vector-based illustrations of each building in the historic area, adding people, animals, trees, fences, and every tiny detail I could include to make the map as real to life as possible. We then added animated fife and drums, cannons, carriages, and people to add to the experience. We even created different versions of the map for each season and for holidays, with the map reflecting the experience at the current time of year. Tour the town, let website visitors plan their visit, learn more about the historic area, and dive deeper into an 18th century city at the heart of the American Revolution. Not all of our clients have a physical space that needs to be connected to their digital, digital presence. Uh, but when they do, looking for ways to integrate both the physical and the digital can lead to a richer, more engaging user experience. And this doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, for example, in our work with the city of Boulder, we established early on that capturing the outdoor feel of the flat irons was a primary goal for the design of the website. We looked to the flat irons for inspiration for color, imagery, and texture, and used those as guiding elements in the design. Today, we're going to talk about some of our recent work and how each of us approaches these types of projects from our own perspective. To start things off, I'll pass things over to Kelsey to talk about her perspective as a digital strategist. Great, thanks, Ken. Hello, again, I'm Kelsey Boyd, a digital strategist at Atten, and I'm really excited to share with all of you how we use design strategy to connect the physical and digital experiences for an ongoing project for a Sanford Underground Research Facility, or SURF. So who is SURF? SURF is America's deepest research facility and is located in Leeds, South Dakota, with almost 400 miles of underground tunnels housing some of the world's most sensitive research in particle physics and other STEM sectors. When SURF came to Atten, looking for a new family of websites, they knew that they wanted to evolve away from solely focusing on speaking to policymakers who have historically driven funding for the facility. SURF wanted their new website to connect the local community to their newly acquired visitor center, as well as better support their expanding education and outreach work, a department running everything from event series and festivals to the development and distribution of physical STEM curriculum units to educators across South Dakota. We knew that while SURF wanted to continue connecting with the global science community who might be more familiar with their cutting edge research, the work that SURF hosts was not necessarily accessible to their neighbors. So this brings us to SURF's work. SURF hosts hundreds of scientists and partner organizations from around the world, scientists and engineers investigating the origins of the universe through fundamental research in areas such as dark matter, neutrinos, nuclear fusion, life sciences, and more. Our early discovery and information architecture phases focused on clarifying the complexity and breadth of the work happening at SURF why doing fundamental particle level research matters 
and how it inspires the cultural and educational work SURF does with local communities. While we were focused on clarifying what types of research SURF hosts for various audiences, we found that communicating the work they do is inextricably linked to the physical qualities of their site. SURF's ability to host some of the world's most sensitive research is only possible because of the cosmic noise and radiation that is filtered out by going so deep underground. So let's talk more about SURF's physical space. While we were able to understand through our calls with the client that in theory, going underground reduces cosmic noise, the experience of going from the bright ground plane of the Black Hills down through a 10 minute elevator ride descending an entire mile underground, passing tunnels housing the grit and grunge of life science and geology research, only to arrive in the bright and pristine labs hosting some of the world's most sensitive particle physics research. That just all can't be communicated over Zoom. As we began to clarify at a high level through at a high level through the new website's content strategy that the work SURF does is only possible because of the depths of the facility's location, we began to realize two things. One, that the breadth of ground level facilities that are spread across multiple locations in the town of Leed, all with varying types of security and access across user types are not clearly connected on their, for their growing local audience. And that two, that the continuously expanding underground facilities have been challenging to visually communicate. Today, the only way to truly grasp the depth and complexity of this underground tunnel system is by visiting the cast sculpture in their visitor center, which you can see on the screen now, where guests can see reflected in the mirror above the sculpture, how the various mining shafts spread across lead give access to an incredibly complex underground system below. While we wanted to connect the complexity of the underground work, content which connects research partners all over the world, as well as inspiring policymakers to continue funding future expansion of these underground facilities, we wanted the website to bridge this complex underground space to the ground plane experiences which visitors can explore. So how do we translate physical space to design strategy? In order to connect the physical space to our digital experience, we approached the design through a concept design lens, creating a core idea that would drive and connect subsequent design decisions. For this project, our concept was to use the website's user experience to replicate the in-person experience of descending into the underground facilities at SURF. To bridge this high-level idea to a flexible design system, we created a design framework to communicate the site's experiential qualities. The real and intangible dichotomies that we experience as we descended into surf, from darkness to brightness, cosmic noise and organic grit to pristine sensitivity, these created the conceptual framework that guided our design language. This flexible matrix allowed us to use design to bridge everything from the gritty excavation of the tunnels themselves, the so-called grungy sciences and cosmic noise filtered as you descend through these dark spaces, to the radioactively quiet nature of doing work so deep underground, to the bright and pristinely sterile labs hosting some of the world's leading research in dark matter and material engineering. And all of this bridges back to the local user's perspective through a bright and inspirational experience at the ground plane. This spectrum of qualities guided our design strategy, inspiring a design system that bridged their work in particle physics to how users browse and explore content on the site. As we get to the resulting design, we'll see that through this process of interpreting the experience of the physical site to a flexible to graphic language, our team has designed a website that uses tactics such as gradients, cosmic noise filters, and other graphic motifs, illustrations, contrast, and flexible content structures that guide audiences through SURF's narrative. Upon completion, our design for SURF will allow their staff to collectively and cohesively communicate the complexity of their work while providing to design flexibility that will grow for years to come. And with that, I'll hand things off to Catherine. Thank you, Kelsey. Hi, my name is Catherine Sutton, Senior Designer at Atten Design Group. Today, I'll be talking about how we created a beautiful modern website for the Natural History Museum of Utah that was directed by the visual identity of the brand and the architecture of their building. In March, 2002, the Atten team visited NHMU to tour the facility, meet NHMU stakeholders and staff, and facilitate design and strategy workshops. NHMU is housed at the Rio Tinto Center, 
a beautiful contemporary 163,000 square foot building located in the foothills above Salt Lake City. The three-story museum displays hundreds of items such as dinosaur bones and fossils, indigenous arts and artifacts, and specimens of insects, plants, animals, minerals, fungi, and more. In total, the museum's collection includes more than one and a half million objects. At our visit, we saw the passion and care NHMU has for its physical space, collections, exhibitions, and science. That passion also extended into their stewardship of the museum's brand. When NHMU hired Atten, they sought a website that was cohesive with the physical space of the museum and the organization's existing brand. The result was a deeply collaborative and fun process, one based on taking inspiration from the museum's physical presence and emulating that in a digital design. On our tour, we experienced a dense and breathtaking exhibit of dinosaur fossils, beautiful and rare specimens of minerals and insects, learn about the arts and culture of Utah's indigenous peoples, explored spaces dedicated to astronomy, geology, climate change, and more. We were also quite impressed that there was a paleo paleontology museum or paleontology lab right there in the museum. Visitors could look through the windows to see scientists at work, we could tell that NHMU cared to educate the public on the important research happening at the Rio Tinto Center. In the public gathering and meeting spaces of the museum, you can see amazing views of the Salt Lake City cityscape and mountains. It was interesting to see how the museum's placement in the mountains highlighted the natural wonders it was dedicated to, as well as facing out into the community it serves. It was important for us and NHMU to learn about the important and exciting work that wasn't always on public view, the collections and research departments. We toured spaces dedicated to anthropology, paleontology, and entomology. We were impressed with the state-of-the-art facilities and the passionate staff at work. We also had candid conversations with them about how we could incorporate this work into the site that was easy for the public to find and understand. Our workshops included about a dozen people from many departments in the organization, including administration, programming, collections and research, museum curation, design, public relations, technology, and more. Our exercises included card sorting, voice and tone analysis, and reviewing high-end website design in the museum space and beyond. It was great to hear from a variety of voices and perspectives in person to have honest and candid conversations about the future of the museum, its brand, and the new site. NHMU's website houses a blog, press releases, programs and events, education and volunteer opportunities, exhibitions and collections databases, and more. As we got to work, we learned about the challenges and frustrations NHMU was facing with its current site. It had a bloated backend architecture, a poorly organized and disorienting navigation system, and an outdated aesthetic that was technically on brand, but not a good representation of the organization. The site had basic narrow layouts, low quality images, and a jewel toned color palette. Fortunately, there was plenty of opportunity for us at Atten to collaborate with NHMU to elevate the beauty and modern aesthetic of the website to the level that the building was achieving. Photography was an essential approach to connecting the museum experience to the website. We were fortunate to work with a professional library of photos provided by the museum that showcased the interesting and beautiful areas to explore, as well as objects on and off view. We sought to find many opportunities to make photography a focal point in a given layout. We created full width areas for photos and configured image galleries for, and video players. Another notable aspect of the design we paid close attention to was the amount of white space included in the page layouts. Inspired by the three-story high open lobby at the museum called the Canyon, we sought to create a generous amount of white space between content that was also balancing expectations on user needs and behavior. These were clear and easy to implement opportunities to drastically improve the site. But how did we apply the specifics of NHMU's identity, such as voice and tone, color, typography, and graphic design? 
We kicked off the project gaining clarity on NHNU's intentions behind the visual identity, which was heavily inspired from the natural world. Reykjavik, an angular font inspired by the museum's architecture, would automatically serve as a primary heading and display font. Red rock was NHMU's primary color, supported by an array of naturally inspired accent colors. As for graphic design, the brand established guidelines on regular angular geometric overlays intersecting with photos to support text. During design exploration, we looked into areas we could experiment and push design direction that supported the existing brand identity and guidelines. We looked into adding angled cutouts to images, brightening the color palette, overlaying abstract colored shapes, tried out some sans serif body fonts and played with a variety of background colors and accents. After planning the site with wireframes, the site map, and a content model, we started design with a homepage that brought together ideas from discovery, strategy, and design exploration. We introduced a more neutral primary color palette for the site to emphasize red rock. For backgrounds, we focused on white and light tan backgrounds for most cases and included a few touches of black. Later, we created a series of callout components using the rest of NHMU's brand colors. This allows most color from the site to come from photography. Just as the museum inspires curiosity and wonder for people of all ages and backgrounds, the voice and tone of the language of the site also had to match this intent. We didn't want our approach to be too playful or too childish, but also not too cold or sophisticated. Rather, we opted for allowing the museum to speak for itself through outstanding visuals and simple headings. We identified another series of challenges re related to the physicality of NHMU's facilities, NHMU's collection and research department that was mostly out of public view. Visitors had a rich, immersive museum experience, but were missing out on the world-class science happening behind closed doors. With the flexibility of a website, clever strategy, and commitment, we were given an opportunity to expose their excellent work to digital audiences. There were several ways we sought to address the issue, starting with site navigation. Collaborating with NHMU, we developed a primary and mega menu structure that showed collections and research links more easily to the user under the explore section. This simple and open layout inspired by the wide spaces at the museum allows user to discover information, programs, and opportunities while providing quick access to popular links such as visit, purchase tickets, and view the special exhibition. Our next challenge was featuring collections and research on the homepage. Without overwhelming the homepage too much, we sought to create a fun, interactive gallery overview of the various areas of research in a voice that spoke to general audiences, paired with colorful icons and a link to the blog, which heavily features updates on collections and research. We also worked to deliver a robust refresh to the museum's collection and research pages. We added a detailed collections item gallery, blog posts relevant to the area of research, and an overview of staff. This work allows NHMU to inform the public on its important work. And lastly, we sought to design a beautiful multimedia blog that could support high quality images, video, featured collection items, and more on NHMU's blog and press releases, which often serves as the primary source of new information from collections and research. As of today, NHMU's site is full speed ahead in development, and we're looking forward to announcing the site's launch in the new year. At the beginning of our work with NHMU, before we even toured the building, the client reminded themselves and us at Atten that architecting a new digital home is equally as important as it was designing and planning for their new building. Prior to the Rio Tinto Center, NHMU was housed at the University of Utah's campus and had outgrown an aging space. Now partnering with Atten, NHMU had the opportunity to create a beautiful, expansive, elegant new digital home that suits their current and future needs. We're thrilled with the work we've done so far and look forward to sustaining NHMU's vision to lead natural history, education, and research. Thank you so much. I'll be passing things over to Ken. Thanks, Catherine. Hi again, I'm Ken Woodworth, Atten's VP of Design. I'm going to talk about a few recent projects that required a literal connection between the digital and the physical space. 
The Museum of Contemporary Art in Denver is a museum that promotes creative expression, risk-taking, and experimentation through rotating exhibitions and innovative community events. Our first project with MCA Denver was to design email campaign templates that represented their voice and tone. We worked with the museum to understand their personality, first through element collages, and then in designing the emails. Based on the initial design work, we created email designs that reflected that same personality using bold typography, colors, and imagery. And with the success of this work, we engaged with the museum to design mcadenver.org, a website that connects users with the museum's collection, events, and community. We designed the website to showcase the museum's exhibitions and artists first and foremost. We captured the feeling of being in the museum using animation and interactions, clever copywriting, and irreverent imagery. And after the launch of their flagship site, the museum approached us with perhaps the most exciting and certainly unique project yet. They had a vision for an exhibition that could connect artists with the communities they live in, in a way that had never been done before. The Octopus Initiative, as they call it, puts local art in the hands of Denver residents through an art loan system. The museum has commissioned local artists for pieces of art and users can browse and select their favorites to be placed in a lottery. Through the lottery system, selected winners are able to borrow the work for 10 months. Each quarter, a new lottery takes place and more art is loaned out to the community. We were enlisted to create a brand for the Octopus Initiative, a website and touchscreen kiosks that could be used in the museum by visitors. We began with extensive logo exploration, working closely with the museum to capture the spirit of the Octopus Initiative in a visual form that's still connected with the MCA Denver brand. Through rounds of logo design presentations, we landed on a mark that is as innovative as the initiative itself. Concentric lines evoke the feeling of expanding and connect with the literal act of distributing artwork throughout the community. From there, we moved on to the website, which would function both online and in the kiosks in the museum space. The website gives focus to the artists and their art, fostering their connection to the community they live in. An intuitive browsing experience keeps things simple and lets users both online and in person explore the Octopus Initiative collection. Once they've found something they like, users can heart the art to be entered in the lottery for a chance to bring artwork to their own home. And here's a winner about to take, her home, take home her artwork. We also developed brand guidelines to ensure the mark is used correctly. The lines from the logo and the colors from NCA Denver are incorporated throughout the website and the museum space itself. Our work with MCA Denver continues today and provides us with some of the most fun and challenging projects we've worked on. Now I wanna talk about another project with a similar challenge. Curious is an interactive and experimental learning space at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. This exhibit brings some of the 6,000 collection objects housed at the museum out from behind the scenes. Visitors can pick up and explore objects solve science puzzles, and even meet a scientist. Before our work with the museum, the exhibit used interactive touch screens that allowed visitors to scan QR codes to learn more about an object. In a time of COVID, this approach didn't make sense. We began working with the National Museum of Natural History to develop a mobile-first application that visitors could use on their own devices, scanning QR codes using their phone cameras, and eliminating the need for the kiosks. In designing the Curious application, we wanted visitors to feel like they were using a tool directly connected to the space they were in. The artwork used throughout the exhibit became a cornerstone of our design work. We began design with style tiles aimed to explore the brand personality of the Curious exhibit. Style tiles captured the vibrant, lively color palette of the exhibit, incorporating photography of scientists and visitors and the artwork seen throughout the physical space. From there, we expanded on our initial design work, creating a user-friendly experience following best practices for mobile application design and accessibility. 
we designed the Curious application to enable users to dive deeper into each object, showing photos, details, and other related objects. Our collaboration with the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History has led to an engaging experience that promotes exploring the collection and challenges visitors to unleash their curiosity. With that, I'm going to pass things over to Janice. Awesome. Thanks, Ken. I'm so excited to be here with you all today. My name is Janice Camacho. I am the Director of Project Management here at Atten. And I've been fortunate enough to have been on site for the City of Boulder, Natural History Museum of Utah, and Sanford Underground Research Facility on sites, where we were able to dive into the client's business while also taking stock of where it is that they do work. Outside of the strategic and design benefits that my team has highlighted for you, I'm here to discuss one of the most important aspects of these visits, the building and solidifying of relationships with our client teams and how this is done through these visits. First, I'd like to chat about the value of the relationship and having the team show up in an in-person capacity. Before I dive in fully, we have a couple questions for you. The first is how many of you all have either gone or hosted an on-site meeting either pre or post COVID. Secondly, if you've hosted or attended an event, how would you rate that relationship over those that you have not met in person? One being the lowest and five being the highest. I think it's a fair assumption that those who have been in the same room with a client or agency team have a far better relationship than those who have not. Why is that? Well, I'm here to tell you. There's a certain experience that can only be gained through an in-person visit. Think about how many conversations are interrupted or stopped altogether because Zoom only allows one person to be talking at a time. Now imagine trying to explain the beauty of the Natural History Museum of Utah, for example, with only one person and one perspective at a time. It's nearly impossible. So much information and insight would have gone missed. When a team is able to see a space firsthand, they notice for themselves what makes a space unique and the conversation is immediately elevated. Through these on-sites, we're able to dive right into the more specific questions, surfacing what we want to highlight throughout the project and doing so quickly so we can move right along in the process to next steps. For very different reasons, all three visits I participated in were instrumental in ensuring that we were kicking off projects on the right foot. There's a lot to be said about how face-to-face -face contact, brace, brainstorming, having a meal, and even sharing in a post-workshop happy hour can all aid in understanding behaviors and how we're going to interject that information into a project and the relationship moving forward. With Sanford Underground Research Facility, this understanding of how the team and their end users acted, how they acted was imperative in putting forth a design that allowed them to access the information they sought quickly and efficiently. Sure, there was a lot of our own touring and questions, but we were able to observe the facility, the staff, and even some of the public in the visitor center, which really allowed us to appreciate and comprehend what we needed to do on this project. It was the perception that we gained during our visit that displayed our knowledge of this project, the location, and their ultimate end goals for research that led to a design that reflects said needs and solidified our place as a trusted partner to serve. Similar to my previous point, the engagement of our client teams and how that ultimately impacts overarching relationships is something that can be increased throughout the entirety of a project when started with an on-site visit. In the instance of the city of Boulder, for example, we were able to see firsthand how our large stakeholder group of almost 30 people engaged with each other. What did they think and how did they feel about this project as a whole? Who spoke up the most? Who spoke up infrequently? But when they did, the entire room nodded their heads in agreement. This understanding proved to be invaluable as we moved through the project, as we were able to talk to the right folks at the right time 
encouraging conversation and certain people to speak up and ensure that the project was taking into account all of the necessary opinions, all of which would have been foreign to us had we not participated in person with our city team. We've now been working together for almost three years, and I believe it was this initial relationship building that allowed us to establish a strong foundation with all of the members of the team and has ultimately brought us this far. Overall, the importance of seeing the physical space, strategizing and designing around the location allows us to meet the highest levels of client satisfaction. There's an extra level of knowledge of our clients as a whole that comes by seeing where they work, how users engage with their physical space, and what is displayed throughout the buildings. This allows us to put forth our best possible work and ultimately realize both the project and organizational objectives with the added benefit of working together for years. In closing, we can't emphasize enough the importance of our team seeing the physical space of an organization prior to beginning a project. There's so much that can be derived from an on-site visit, from a strategic perspective, and seeing a facility in the way that a user would navigate it to design where the website can be truly an extension of the brand and allow for your users to feel like they're there with you all physically. It allows for us to begin establishing a strong working relationship, sound in understanding and comprehension of why you all love the company and the space that you work in. All this to say that if budget doesn't allow, if timing doesn't allow, if space doesn't allow, we are also able to observe these similar insights from a virtual onsite. We will always work with you all where it makes the most sense to ensure that we are reaching the end goal of any project we're working on.